السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله All praises are due to Allah the creator, the cherisher and the sustainer of this universe and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad and his companions and descendants and his followers dear respected brothers and sisters Jazakumullah khairan for coming Alhamdulillah, we came to the final session. Actually, this is a combination of two short sessions. I will need one hour, at least, to one hour, 15 minutes. I'm just informing the chair not to stop me before that. And anyway, they, they won't close the mosque before that because, Alhamdulillah, there, there, there is an event on the other room, human appeal. Uh, first, before we start, I want to know your feedback on the last session that I gave the spirit of prayer. What Did it change anything in the way you pray? Who felt an impact on the way he, on the way he prays? Show me your hands. Alhamdulillah, many of you. Is it continuing now? Are you continuing this way? Alhamdulillah. So now I can say that we changed the way we read the Quran. We changed the way we pray. Alhamdulillah. Today we need to change the way we make dhikr also. And all of you remember this uh, funny example that I gave before that if I spill this water on the brother in front of me and to apologize I tell him, sorry, 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 like that 100 times. Of course, this is ridiculous. And of course, this is too offensive for him. He won't feel that I'm sorry. He doesn't, he, he will only feel that he wants to smack me in the face. Because this is the way I'm apologizing. That's exactly what we do with Allah. When we say, astaghfirullah, 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 this way. And that's why Lady Rab'a Al-Adawiyya said, Inna istighfarana yahtaju ila istighfar. Our istighfar needs istighfar. We need to ask forgiveness from Allah for the way we ask forgiveness from Allah. And same with all, everything. Actually, I wanted to tell you that changing the way you pray is a big achievement. Big achievement. Because... The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said <coughs> that some people pray but they do not get rewarded for their salah neither for the half of the salah nor neither for, nor for the uh, uh, one quarter of the salah, nor for one fifth, nor for one sixth, nor for one over ten. Not even one tenth of the salah. Some people get rewarded for why? Because they pray heedlessly. And the Prophet also has another hadith that he says, "Inna yuktabu lil abdu min salatihi ma aqla minha." A servant of Allah gets rewarded for what? He concentrates, when he concentrates in his, in his salah, when he prays with his khushur. And subhanallah, we said before that, one of the main reasons Allah have made wine haram is in order to pray with khushur and to understand what we say in salah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara, تَعْلَمُوا مَا تَقُولُونَ Oh, you who believe, do not approach prayers while you are intoxicated in order to understand all what you say. Alhamdulillah, we don't drink and still we were not, we, we, we were not even understanding what we pray. No, from now on, alhamdulillah, we will concentrate, we have to understand. This is very important. Now, let's take our lesson, the final lesson which is called munajah, 
conversing with dhikr, hymning, wa dua, and invoking Malik al Ardu wa Sama, the king of the heavens and the earth. We need to talk about munaja, conversing. What is munaja? And the, what is dhikr? And the dua. Brothers and sisters, what is the main challenge which is challenging us? The main challenge which is challenging us is that we are created from clay, from mud, the dust of this earth, which is pulling us down to this earth. And we are supposed to sublime and to transcend and to elevate ourselves, reaching out for the heavens to become like angels and even better than angels. Can we become better than angels? Yes, definitely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Bayna, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Those who believe and do good deeds are the best of the creation. So we are supposed to become better than the angels, but the problem is we are made from this body, clay, that is pulling us down. The problem with this body is that this body have hormones. And those hormones and those digestive system, uh, reproductive system, there are demands, demands in this body. These demands of the body are the desires. And these desires are pulling us down. So what we need to do is to resist. Resist. Resist the loneliness with transcendence. Resist forgetfulness with remembrance. We have to resist greed with altruism. So the body is always pushing you down and you have to liberate yourself. Now we need to talk about how to resist forgetfulness with remembrance. Remembrance of Allah. How can we forget Allah? He is our creator, our sustainer, and our protector. Those are, those are three very important attributes of Allah. The creator who brought you into existence. The first ni'mah, the first gift of Allah is the gift of existence. Ni'mat al-ijad. That he brought you into existence. And then comes next ni'am, which are ni'am al-imdad. The gifts of sustenance. And he's our sustainer. So he's our creator who brought us into existence. Sustainers, the one who's providing for us. And protector, the one who's protecting us. We said we are supposed to be better than the angels. But we're competing with a very strong competitor, the angels. They are in a continuous state of dhikr. They are continuously making dhikr because they are free. They don't go to work at 8 or 7. They don't come back from work at 5. They are free. They have free time all the time. They're just doing remembrance of Allah continuously. We have, we, we need time to work. We need time to eat. We need time to, to play. We need time to rest. We need time to sleep. How can we compete with them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made it possible for us that if we say the dhikr before anything, anyone, any of these activities with good intentions that we are written in a continuous state of remembrance during this activity. So before you sleep, you sleep with good intentions and you, do the, you say the dhikr that we are supposed to say before we sleep, during your sleep you are written as if you are in continuously remembering Allah. Before you eat, same thing. Before you go out, when you go out of your house, same thing. When you enter your house, same thing. So we have adhkar that can make us with the good intentions in a continuous state of remembrance competing with the angels here. 
again, <clears throat> every one of us is a nafs. Nafs means oneself. And the nafs, the oneself, is a combination between the body and the soul. The soul contains the heart and contains the spirit. So the body and the soul, just to simplify it. The body, we give it nutrition all the time. I ate before I came to give this lesson. And here they are bringing me water to drink. And if you look in my bag, you may find even some medications. All this is for who? The body. We take care a lot about this body. While the soul is much more important than the body, because if my soul departs my body right now, you won't be sit in your places, sitting in your places looking at me. Why? Because I left. My soul is the most important. Father Solomon left. Still his body is on the chair. But this is not Father Solomon. This is his body. The soul is the operator which is operating this machine. The problem is we do not give nutrition for the soul. We do not give drink for the soul. We do not give medications for the soul. So what happens is the soul keeps shrinking. Keeps weakening. Becomes weak. And the body is getting stronger every day. Because we keep on feeding it, giving it, and hormones. So this is a problem. Desires are growing. It's really putting pressure on oneself. And the soul, which is supposed to resist, is weak. So a dhikr is the nutrition and the medication of the soul. A dhikr. The most important type of dhikr is the Quran. And we took six sessions just to change the way we read the Quran. Heedlessly. Now we read it with contemplation and with reflection. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Al-Quran a dhikr in the Quran. So a dhikr, one of the most important type is the Quran. The second important type is salah. Salah is dhikr. And now we come to the remembrance, the adhkar, the hymns. We need to talk about it. Because actually dhikr generally is the communication channel. Where you communicate with Allah. This is how you communicate with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me, then I will remember you. Of course, Allah doesn't forget. But here he means, if you mention me, I will mention you. Who are you to be mentioned by Allah? Subhanallah. Don't think that you are little, no. You are the Khalifa. You are a human being that Allah honored above all the creation, even above the angels. Allah have made the angels make sujood, prostrate themselves in front of our first ancestor. Because we are his trustee on earth. And the Prophet وسلم, said a very important hadith about dhikr. He said, مثل الذي يذكر ربه والذي لا يذكره كمثل الحي والميت The example of the one who mentions his Lord and the one who doesn't is like a living person and a dead person. So the one who doesn't remember his Lord, mention his Lord, is a dead person. The one who's not communicating with his Lord. You know when they go to war, some of them come back alive, some of them come in bags, dead. Some are taken prisoners and some are called what? Missing in action. So some soldiers are missing in action. After some time, when they are not hearing anything about them, when the enemy says we don't have them in the list of the POWs, so they are considered dead. Their wives will get a divorce by the law, and their kids are considered orphans. They are considered dead, even though we can make sure that they are dead, even though they can be alive somewhere in a jungle or something, but they are missing because there's no communication with them. Subhanallah. 
the one who doesn't communicate with God, he's considered dead, missing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أنا عند ظن عبدي بي وأنا معه إذا ذكرني فإن ذكرني في نفسه ذكرته في نفسي وإن ذكرني في ملأ ذكرته في ملأ خير منهم I am with my servant when he mentions me if he mentions me secretly I mention him secretly if he mentions me among people I mention him among a better group How come? How come we don't keep mentioning Allah all the time if we know that he will be mentioning us by name? The Prophet ﷺ was asked an advice by one of the companions who went complaining, saying, Oh Prophet of Allah, there are so many rituals now of Islam. Give me an advice. Which one should I stick to most? He said, لَا يَزَّالُ لِسَانُكَ رَطْبًا in dhikrillah keep your tongue continuously wet with the remembrance of Allah keep Allah in mind all the time keep Allah on your tongue all the time but the way the prophet used to do <coughs> the remembrance was different from the way we do it subhanallah 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 subhanallah, subhanallah. no there was, he did it with passion passion Listen to what the Prophet Yusuf Sallallahu used to say after every prayer. This is in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad. He used to say, Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulla shay'in wa malikahu ana shaheedun annaka anta al-Rabbu wahdaka la sharika lak. Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulla shay'in wa malikahu ana shaheedun anna Muhammadan abduka wa rasulak. Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulla shay'in wa malikahu ana shaheedun anna al-ibada kullum ikhwa. Oh Allah. No, no, no. He says, O oh my Lord, and the Lord of everything, I bear witness that you are the Lord alone and that you have no partners with you. Listen, this is not dua. He's not, he's not asking anything here. He is doing what? Conversing with God. Speaking to God. O oh my Lord, and the Lord of everything in the world, I bear witness that Muhammad is your servant and your messenger. Okay, I can understand that I say, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger and the servant of Allah. But why is the Prophet saying so about himself? What does it mean when he says, I bear witness that he himself saying that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? It means that he is confirming that he is consistent in fulfilling his duty as a messenger, no matter the difficulties that he will face. He will, he's insisting on doing his job. Oh Allah, oh my Lord, and the Lord of everything in the world, I bear witness that all people are brothers. Brothers in humanity. Of course, brotherhood has different levels. The strongest tie, the strongest knot is brotherhood in religion. My brother in religion is dearest to my heart than anyone else. But this doesn't mean that there is not other levels of brotherhood. There is also brotherhood in, um, uh, you know, the fellow, Jazakallah khair. In the, in, uh, in, uh, like the uh, nationals of, of, of the same country, uh, people who are belong to the same tribe or to the same uh, 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 country, even from different religions. And this is confirmed by the Quran over 20 times. Allah says, and to the people of Ad, pagans, I sent their brother Hud, a Muslim prophet. His brother in what? Not in religion, but in, not even in humanity also. A, a stronger tie than just in humanity, that they are all from the same tribe. They are brothers from the same tribe. And there is brotherhood in human. But the Prophet said, all people are 
brothers. Allahumma rabbana wa rabba kulla shay wa malikahu. O my Lord and the Lord of everything in the world. Ij'alni mukhlis. Here he started to make dua. After all this conversation, speaking to Allah, he started to make dua. Asking what? He's not asking like us. Oh Allah, let me marry the, this, that, this woman. Oh Allah, give me one million pounds. He's saying, oh Allah, make me sincere to you. And same with my family. My, I want my family to be sincere to you. في كل ساعة. Every while. في الدنيا والآخرة. In this life and in the hereafter. يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اسمع واستجب. Accept my prayers and respond to them. Subhanallah. So even when he makes dua, he's making dua about something that gets him to the right place on, in the hereafter. Gets him to the highest place in, in Jannah. And he encouraged us to say Adhkar. And the Prophet did not just say, say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. No, he, he motivated us to say it by saying Kalimatan, two words. Khafifatan ala lisan. Easy to say. Which means literally light on the tongue, which means. It's they are easy to say. Thaqilatani fil mizan, heavy in your scale on the day of judgment, which means very rewardable, brings you a lot of rewards. Habibatani ila rahman, and the most merciful love them. What are those two words? So the Prophet is motivating us, making an introduction. So you feel like, hey, come on, come on, say what are they? I want to say them. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. Many of us say Subhanallah, but they don't understand what does it mean, Subhan. Very important to understand. The word Subhan means I bear witness that Allah is perfect and He is above any human traits. No shortcomings, nothing. He is perfect. So the word Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim means how perfect and exalted Allah is. Wa bihamdihi, just Subhanallah means, Subhanallah means how perfect and exalted Allah is. Wa bihamdihi, and I praise Him. Subhanallah al Azim. How perfect and exalted Allah Almighty is. That's what it means. Say it with me. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al Azim. It means how perfect and exalted Allah is. And I praise Him. How perfect and exalted Allah Almighty is. When you say something like that, you have to understand. Very important. You can't say things that you don't understand. This is not our religion. One of the adhkar that the Prophet also told us, and inshallah you will receive an email tonight inshallah. Or maybe in the morning inshallah when the video is ready. And usually Brother Mahmoud, Jazallah khairan, on your behalf I want to thank him. Because usually he used to finish the video editing by Fajr and upload it. You will receive an email that has the video of the lecture and an attachment of what is called Al-Ma'thurat. The Ma'thurat are a group of uh, dua and hymns and adhkar that the Prophet ﷺ told us to say. And they are compiled by Sheikh Hassan al-Banna from the Sunnah. It's all from the Sunnah of Allah, of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them is Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Adad khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zina ta'arshihi wa midad kalimatih How perfect and exalted Allah is which is Subhanallah wa bihamdihi and I praise him by the number of his creation Adad khalqihi Adad means the number 
by the number of his creation. So I praise Allah by the number of his creation, which I don't know how much, probably billions, even more. And the pleasure of his self. So I keep praising him until he is pleased with me. And by the weight of his throne. And by the ink to record his words and signs. How much ink do you need? By the number of the drops of ink I praise him. By the number of his creation I praise him. And there's a story that says, the hadith that says, a servant of Allah once said, Ya Rabbi lak alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanika. Oh my Lord, all praise is due to you as is befitting to your glorious presence and your great sovereignty. So that was a problem for who? The angels. They couldn't know how to write it. They don't have that in the, in the price list. They didn't know how much, how many rewards should they give him. So they were puzzled. They went complaining saying, Oh Allah, one of your servants praised you in a way that puzzled us. We don't know how to write it. So Allah said, what did he say? And Allah knows what did he say? What he said. So they told him, he said, Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu, kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Oh my Lord, all praise is due to you as is befitting to your glorious presence and your great sovereignty. So Allah told them, just write it as it is and I will reward him on the day of judgment for that. How can we know that and we don't say this dhikr? This will be inshallah in the attachment with the email tonight. The way we say istighfar. The Prophet told us different ways of istighfar but he said that the following way that I will tell you is called Sayyid al-Istighfar. The master of istighfar, the best way to do istighfar ever. It says, <clears throat> Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma istata'at, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhambi, faghfir thee. It means, Allahumma anta rabbi. Allahumma means, O oh Allah. Anta rabbi. You are my Lord. When I say you are my Lord, here it means what? That I am confirming the Lordship of Allah. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God but you. Here I am confirming the Godship of Allah. It means you created me. Here I am confirming that he is the creator. And I am your servant. I am your slave servant. Here I am confirming my servitude. Al-Ubudiyya. To Allah. And I am and I uphold your pledge and the evil that I have committed. Here, this is like I am giving the pledge to Allah, renewing my pledge to Allah and admitting the sins that I committed. It means I acknowledge your blessings upon me and your gifts and grace upon me. Here you are acknowledging the gifts of Allah. And I acknowledge my sin. And I acknowledge that I sinned, that I'm a sinner. So forgive me. A materialistic person may say, all this to say it, so forgive me. I could have said it 30 times during this time. Again, people think about quantity. We want to worship Allah with quality, quality worship. This is the quality of the 
Adhkar of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's true that you could have said 100 times, Astaghfirullah, 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 during this conversation with Allah. But actually, it is very important to speak to Allah first. Okay. And the Prophet said, and then the, the rest says, because no one forgives sins except you. And the Prophet said, the one who says this, with conviction, during the day, and he dies before night, falls down, he goes to Jannah. And the one who says this during the night, and then he dies before the daybreak, he is in the Jannah. But he said, the one who says this, with conviction. How can a judge speak like that? And you say that was with conviction? It was not with nothing. Not conviction, not understanding, nothing. It's not even respect to the one that you are speaking to. And the hadith is in Al-Bukhari, by the way. <coughs> so you see here, during these adhkar, some of us will feel that the heart is moving. There's some vibration in the heart now. When we listen to these adhkar, or when we say these adhkar, with reflection. We said, the heart has what? The feelings, the emotions. This means that the emotions are moving now. This means the Iman is increasing. We said before, Iman, the Iman that we need is increasing the Iman in, in every single feeling and emotion in the heart. It's not enough to increase it in one emotion and the other one not. And we give an example last time of the guy whom his shoes were stolen in the mosque. And he was crying in the khutbah. And he was crying in the salah because the khutbah and the salah were about death. But when he found that his shoes were stolen, he kept shouting and yelling in the mosque. Why? Because he had increased the, the, the iman during the khutbah and the salah, increased the iman in the feelings of uh, fearfulness, God-fearing. But it did not increase the iman in the feeling of acceptance. So we need to increase the iman in all the feelings. The Prophet ﷺ also gave us a very important dhikr. He said it is the cure of sadness and distress. Sadness and distress. Listen, brothers, there's a lot of stress on us in this society, this materialistic world. Don't leave yourself until, and don't ignore your heart and don't leave it until it becomes a prey for depression. The stress can grow and it turns into a depression. Quickly, whenever you feel distressed, start saying the adhkar with contemplation. It removes all the distress, especially this one. But this one is not in the ma'thurat, by the way. So you have to find it, inshallah. It's called ilaj al hamm wal hazm. I will see maybe tonight. I'll go and I send it to Sister Maryam to send you, inshallah, in, uh, in the email. It says, no servant, the Prophet ﷺ said this hadith, no servant would ever feel distress or sadness. And then he says this dhikr, except that Allah will remove his sadness and distress and exchange them with happiness that he feels it in the heart. So the Sahaba said, should we learn them, O Prophet of Allah? He said, anyone who listens to them, who hears them, should learn them. So would you like me to say them? But you will have to learn. Allahumma inni abiduk, ibn abidik, ibn amatik, nasiyati biyadik, maadun fiya hukmuk, adlun fiya qadauk, أسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك 
أو أنزلته في كتابك أو أطلعت عليه أحدا من خلقك أن تجعل القرآن الكريم ربيع قلبي وجلاء همي وذهاب غمي وحزني It means اللهم means what? Oh Allah إني means I أنا عبدك I am your slave servant ابن عبدك the son of your slave servant ابن أمتك the son of your slave girl the woman will not say I am عبد عبدتك she would say أمتك الأمة means slave girl عبد means slave uh, 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 male okay so I am your servant the son of your servant the son of your slave girl ناصيتي means my forehead بيدك is in your hand which means I am totally controlled by you ماضٍ فيا حكمك whatever your decree has to affect me anything that Allah decrees about you will affect you you cannot run ماضٍ فيا حكمك عدلٌ فيا قضاءك means anything that you judge about me is fair is justice it's just أسألك I ask you بكل اسم هو لك with every name of yours سميت به نفسك that you named it for yourself that you named yourself with أو أنزلته في كتابك or you descended it in your book أو علمته أحدا من خلقك or you taught it to someone from among your creation <coughs> أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك or you kept it as a secret or you kept it unknown so maybe Allah has names that are unknown so you are asking Allah by every name whether someone knows or, or no one knows to do what أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلبي to make the glorious Quran the spring of my heart ونور <coughs> صدري and the light of my chest وجلاء حزني وذهاب همي وغمي it means <coughs> and the remover of my distress and sadness so the Quran the cure of your distress and sadness will be in the Quran when you ask Allah to put the cure in the Quran and it's very important as I told you before you make dua to speak to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا for Allah are the most excellent names use them to call on him يعني, can you imagine that you receive an email from someone so you open your email and you find him telling you bring me 1000 pounds without telling you dear Muhammad Assalamu alaikum I hope you are in the best iman and the best health you are always generous with me I want to ask you uh, uh, for a favor I need 1000 pounds but you can't open an email and you find someone telling you, I want 1,000 pounds. That's exactly what we do with Allah when we start by making dua. Oh Allah, I need this, I need that. Oh Allah, even, even when you say, get me to Jannah. No, there's, there's a way to say, get me to Jannah too. Okay, the Prophet وسلم, heard a man making dua in his salah. And he did not glorify Allah. And he did not say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. He did not make dua for the Prophet saying, peace be upon uh, Prophet Muhammad. So the Prophet said, Ajila hadha. This man rushed. He should have not rushed like that. And then after he finished his salah, he called him. And then he told him or told someone else. This is what the narrator is saying. Because probably the Prophet told him, come, come. And then he started to talk to someone else in order not to embarrass the man. 
And he said, if any one of you prays, he should start by glorifying Allah Almighty and praising him and then say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad and then ask whatever he wants. This is the adab. Actually, you start by talking to Allah, glorifying Allah. But why do you make dua for the Prophet? Because it is an accepted dua from anyone, even from a kafir. If a kafir says, may peace and blessings be upon Muhammad, Allah will accept this dua. So don't start except with an accepted dua. Guaranteed accepted, and then continue, push your dua with it. It's an art. And you need to see how the other, even, يعني, يعني, uh, <coughs> this session was longer than this. It has different examples from different prophets. But I chose Prophet Ibrahim, how he conversed with Allah. He said in Surah Ibrahim, verse 38 to 41, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِنْ وَمَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء It means, oh my Lord, you know what we hide and what we announce. And nothing is hidden from you in this heavens or the earth. All praises are due to Allah who granted me in an old age, Ismail and Ishaq, Ishmael and Isaac. Inna Rabbi da'a. My Lord responds to prayers. And then he started to make dua. What did he say? He didn't say, Oh Allah, I want to marry Hajar. He said, What? Rabbi Jalni Muqima Salati wa Mindurriyati Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Oh Allah. Let me be among those who establish the prayers to pray right, to play, to pray the right way. Allow me to be among those who establish the prayers and my offspring. So he's making dua for himself and for his offspring to be among those who establish the prayers. Oh Allah, forgive me and forgive my parents. Don't forget all the believers in your dua. Because uh, again, this is an accepted dua. When you make dua for others, for others, the angels say, Ameen. And the angels make dua for you saying, and may Allah give you the same. So when you want something, make dua for others to have it. Allah will give it to you also. The angels will make dua for you saying, and may Allah give you the same. Uh, Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf said, Rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulki wa allamtani min ta'wil al-ahadithi fatir al-samawati wal-ard anta waliyi fi al-dunya wal-akhirah. And then he made dua, tawafani musliman wa alhiqni bil-salihin. He said, my Lord, you have given me authority. You have taught me something about interpretation of dreams. Creator of the heavens and the earth. You are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. After all this, he started to make dua, saying what? Let me die as a Muslim. Prophet Yusuf, the most noble. When the Prophet said, uh, uh, was asked, who is the most noble? He said, he's Yusuf. He didn't say I. Can you imagine this? How humble was the Prophet He said, Yusuf. Why? He said, he is the noble of the noble of the noble of the noble. Son of the noble, son of the noble, son of the noble. Why? Why? Because he is a prophet, son of a prophet, son of a prophet, son of a prophet. Four generations of prophet. Yusuf, son of Yaqub, son of Ishaq, son of Ibrahim. He, Yusuf is saying, oh Allah, allow me to die as a Muslim. Just to understand how big is the gift of Islam. Prophets are asking Allah to die as Muslims in devotion to Allah. And join me with the righteous. Not considering himself righteous, 
not considering he, yeah, that even he deserves to be among the righteous. He says, and allow me to be with them. Prophet Yusuf, see how humble they are. Well, like just because we come to pray in the mosque and we started to read Quran for an hour every day, we started to look high at ourselves. We are saints. Look at them and how humble they were, how down to earth they were. Look at the Prophet ﷺ, how he used to converse with Allah. <coughs> he used to say, Allahumma innaka tasma'u kalami. This is the Prophet Muhammad. Oh Allah, you hear my words. وَتَرَى مَكَانِي وَتَعْلَمُ سِرِّي وَعَلَانِيَتِي And you see me where I am. And you know what I conceal in my heart and what I announce in public. وَلَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْكَ شَيْءٌ مِنْ أَمْرِي Nothing of my matters is hidden from you. وَأَنَا الْبَائِسُ الْفَقِيرِ And I am miserably in need. المستغيث المستجير asking for help الوجل المشفق المقر المعترف إليك بذنبه I am scared I am frightened I confess my sins and I ask you for help أسألك مسألة المساكين I ask you like a poor person وأبتهل إليك ابتهال المذنب الذليل and I beg you like a humiliated sinner وأدعوك دعاء الخائف الضرير and I pray to you as a scared blind person in the darkness دعاء من خضعت لك رقبته a prayer of a submitter وذل لك جسمه ورغم لك أنفه who submits with all his power to you and humbles himself. This is how the Prophet used to speak to Allah before asking anything. And of course, when he asks, he will ask something about the hereafter. When he was chased by the, ki by the, 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 the kids and the criminals in, in At-Ta'if, stoning him, calling him bad names, it was very humiliating. Try to imagine this. Kids and, and criminals and thugs running after the Prophet. He's running from them, stoning him, calling him bad names. Very humiliating. Then he sat down in a garden and he said, Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwati wa qilla tahilati wa hawani ala nas. Only to you, O oh Allah, I complain from my weakness and from my lack of reason, and from being underestimated by people. Ya arham ar-rahimin, ila man takiluni, ila aduin yatajahamuni, am ila aqaribin malaktahu amri, Allahumma illam yakum bika sakhatun alayya fala ubali, ghayra anna aathiyataka hiya awsa'uli. O the most merciful, did you surrender me to an enemy who abuses me? or to a kin who owns me and controls me, if this is not a punishment from you, then I don't care. I don't care about all this if it's not because you're angry of me. I just hope that you're not angry of me, that this is not a punishment. Except that I would enjoy your welfare more. So he's not asking Allah that this continues. And then he said, أعوذ بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات. I seek refuge with your light, which shines upon the heavens and the earth, and that cleared the darknesses and fixed all matters in this life and the hereafter. I seek refuge with this light from your wrath and anger. I glorify you continuously until you are pleased with me. There is no power. Except from you. أعوذ بنور وجهك الكريم الذي أضاءت له السماوات والأرض وأشرقت له الظلمات وصلح عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة من أن يحل علي غضبك أو ينزل علي سخطك لك العتبة حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك. Allah subhanahu wa taala said about dua. It's very important to make dua to Allah. I know some Muslims who never ask Allah anything. That's not good. By the way, Allah loves 
to hear you asking him. Well, if you're a father and you have a child that doesn't ask you anything at all, this doesn't please you. Because you want him to ask because you want to satisfy him and to give him. You know what he needs, of course, but you still want to hear your child speaking to you, asking you. For Allah is the highest example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدُخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Your Lord says, call on me and I will answer you. Those who are too proud to serve me will enter hell humiliated. This is very dangerous. This ayah means. Allah said, call on me, make dua to me. And then he said, those who are too proud to worship me or serve me. Here the Prophet ﷺ interpreted this verse by saying a very famous hadith. It says, Dua is the worship. In this ayah it means, those who feel too proud to ask me will enter into hell humiliated. Dua is a must, is a must. Let's run to the next session. It's quick. I want to remind you, it means like 20 minutes, okay? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Uh, I want to remind you with the ultimate goals of our workshop. Our workshop is called Tarbiya Imaniya, purifying the heart. Charging the heart with Iman. The first goal, the first phase, is to make your heart awake. To ensure the wakefulness of the heart. And then comes another phase, a higher phase, which is يعني, cutting off the ropes between the heart and the desires. It is called to be born again. To be born again. I know it sounds Christian, but it, that's how it says. Born again. So want to be born again. Born again Muslim. And the highest phase, the third phase is to reach Al-Qalb Salim, the sound heart. The good heart. Now at this stage, Many of us, and I can see from the feedback that comes to the email, the volume of dunya and the hearts started to diminish. And we became more fearful, more fearful of Allah in our dealings. We have here sisters that are sending me amazing stories about starting the relationship again with old relatives, some of them with mothers, that since years, that they have no, have no relations and stuff like that. So alhamdulillah, it's becoming better. We became more fearful of Allah. We have better dealings with people. We have uh, a very positive attitude towards worship. We worship Allah in a better way. This is good. But this is also a very uh, deceptive because you may be deceived that alhamdulillah, my heart is awake now. And then your heart sleeps again. You know, sometimes when the alarm rings for Fajr, sometime, you, you, anyway, you wake up. But you may not be fully awake. When can you know that you are fully awake? When you get up from the bed. But uh, and, 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 uh, until you leave the bed, you may sleep again. Still, many of us, most of us, are in the phase of the heart is awake, but it's not yet up from the bed. It can sleep back again after the workshop if you don't continue doing the homework. Because there's a homework. You don't need to send emails. Khalas, there's no emails. It's between you and Allah. But all this impact that happened to us happened by reading. Most of us are not reading in Arabic reading the translation of the meanings of the Quran according to a translator. What do you think the impact will be if you read the Quran itself in Arabic 
with understanding. So I encourage you to learn Arabic, not to allow you to just read without understanding. Don't accept that. To read it with understanding. If you do this full time, and of course most of us work, you need like nine to 10 months. So if you don't do it full time, you will need two to three years, which is not bad. Not bad, but learn Arabic in a way that allows you to read and understand the Quran. It will take you two to three years, not bad. But this is very important. The sweet, the real taste of the Quran is the Arabic. But until you do so, read the translation in a language that you understand. So, why now are we more straight in our dealings? We have better attitude, better character. What happened to us? Before that, when we used to not read the Quran or read it heedlessly or read it without understanding, we did not have light in the heart. We had darkness in the heart. It was dark. The Quran did what? Just started uh, some light to shine in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ is a dead person brought back to life by us and given light with which to walk among people comparable to someone trapped in deep darkness who cannot see. So the issue is this light that started in the heart, it can dim back again. We are here two types of people. One type will be very happy and very satisfied with this stage and with this level that he have reached with this workshop and then he will cool down by time. And the darkness will start coming back to the heart by time. And the desires, al-hawa, will start to control him back by time. Allah said, فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That by time, Hearts harden. And the other type of us, the other group, will get excited and will understand that he is still in the beginning of the road. So he will continue his way to Allah, realizing that this is just the beginning. This is just the start of his way to Allah. On his way to Allah, he will increase all the time fearfulness. Dunya will keep on becoming smaller and smaller all the time in his eyes. And he will always have death in mind and getting ready for death before it happens. And the Prophet ﷺ was reciting the ayah. أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ <coughs> it says, what about the one whose heart God has opened in devotion to him so that he walks in light from his Lord? The Sahaba said, how can the chest expand? How can the heart be opened? The Prophet said, if the light enters the heart, the chest expands. The Sahaba said, what is the manifestation of this? Is there any signs? The Prophet said, yes. الْإِنَابَ إِلَىٰ دَارِ الْخُلُودِ وَالتَّجَافِي عَنْ دَارِ الْغُرُورِ وَالْإِسْتِعْدَادُ لِلْمَوْتِ قَبْلَ النُّزُولِ Giving more attention to the eternal abode when you keep your eye on the akhirah, the hereafter. And when you, uh, uh, more than the abode of delusions, which is this life, and you get ready for death, this means that your heart has opened. Light is in your heart now. That's why the Prophet said, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib aw abiri sabil. Act in this life as a stranger or a wayfarer. What does that mean? If you check into a hotel for a night, you are using the furniture in the room, the tools, but you are leaving them tomorrow before 11 a.m. So they are, it's not your furniture. 
It's not your tool. You're just using them temporarily. Same thing. Your car is not your car. Your bank account is not your bank account. Everything that you are using in this life, thinking that it's yours, it is not yours. You are leaving it. Your house is not your house. You are away farer. You're just a pa someone, a person, someone passing by. You're a traveler. That's why when the Prophet ﷺ was sleeping on a straw carpet and there were scars in his, in his back, Omar entered and he said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, why don't you tell us to bring you something more comfortable? The Prophet said, Hey, Omar, Mali wa dunya, what do I need from this life? My example in this life is like a traveler who is traveling in a hot summer day and then he found a tree. So he rested for a while under the tree and then he went on his way. This is life. Just a tree where we find on our way, we sleep under the tree for a while or we take some rest and then we continue on our way to Allah. So, we mean, Iman, Iman, the, that we need, is that the heart becomes fully awake. When does the heart become fully awake? When the uh, space of love of Allah in the heart is bigger than the space of the love of anything else in all the emotions. Not in one emotion, not in two emotions. When all your emotions... You feel that the love of Allah is bigger than the love of anything else. Here, this is, it means that your heart is now fully awake. Okay. How can I know that my heart is fully awake? Do you remember the wish list? The wish list, which we said, it, okay, I take it. Is it? The wish list, which is the one that we said in the beginning of our workshop, if you are dying and you ask the angel of death to give you 24 hours and he gave you 24 hours, which would not happen. What are the wish lists? What do you wish to do in those 24 hours? All the things that you need to fix in this life. If you can now do the wish list, then your heart is fully awake. If still there are things that are difficult, then your heart is not fully awake. If it's still difficult to call someone that you cut your relationship with because he called you something bad, because he took something from you, then your heart is not fully awake. When you're not yet ready to say, I forgive you, while you ask forgiveness from Allah, then your heart is not fully awake yet. The second phase that you can reach after reaching the wakefulness of the heart, which actually is something that can happen to you, if you continue doing the homework, maybe within a few months, and then you can reach the second phase, which is to be born again. How can you be born again? When the love of Allah overwhelms your heart, overwhelms your heart, and nearly dunya becomes nothing, nearly nothing in your eyes. And your heart, and, and it actually, dunya becomes insignificant. Insignificant. And the heart becomes very sensitive, gets emotional when hears words of wisdom. And when you make sujood, you feel that your heart has made sujood with you. This is the second phase, which is a very high phase. And then comes the last phase, inshallah, which is the sound heart. The sound heart. Is, and when you worship Allah, as if you see him. As if yani, you are 1,000% sure that he exists. In your dealings, you know that he exists. When you are alone, better than when you are among people. When you don't do the sins that you do alone. The true Iman is when a person believes that no one could have prevented what happened to him. So anything that happens to you, you really believe that no one can have, could have prevented it. At the same time also, no one could have done to you what Allah waved from you. So when you fully trust that 
everything is by the command of Allah. What is the manifestation? What is the sign of this? This is those are the people who are called godly people. Rabbaniyin. Allah says in the Quran, Walakin kunu rabbaniyin. But be godly. What do you mean godly person? A godly person, he may not be handsome. As the Prophet said, Rubba ash'atin aghbar. He may not be handsome. Matfu'un bil abwab. May not even be allowed to enter to some places while others are welcomed. Okay? Very humble people. But they have strong relationship with Allah. That if they ask Allah anything, Allah will respond to their dua. So Iman is a plant. The plant needs a seed and water. The seed is trust. If you have trust in Allah, this is the seed. But you need to water the seed with the good deeds in order for the plant of Iman to grow in your heart. So you need to do good deeds a lot. Good deeds with good intentions and the, the seed of trust of Allah. So the last thing, the concept of salvation. Christians believe that if you believe, you are saved. Muslims believe. You believe, you're not saved yet. Because the salvation in Islam is a bird that flies with two wings. With one wing, it will fall down. Al-Iman, faith, wal amal salih good deeds. You need to have both Iman and good deeds. So anything good deed that you do, you should have also the heart action. So there should be physical action, heart action. For example, istighfar, it is physical. Astaghfirullah, this is physical that you, you do, okay? There should be heart action, which is regret. The emotions of regret should be working when you say istighfar. If, for example, you are humbling yourself, you can be humbling yourself just to show off. People will say, this is a very humble person, and you like people to say so. No. You should really feel that you are less than the others. Others probably are better than me. Without Allah, you are nothing. You really feel helpless without Allah. This means that you are really humble. If you give gifts to people, if you go to visit people, there should be also some uh, feelings toward the people. That you love those people, you like those people, so there should be feelings of love and passion towards people. This means that the heart should be always in action with your physical actions. Brothers, we are like um, a calendar. You know, the calendar, some time ago it was like a paper calendar. Every day we remove one page, right? If you remove a page by mistake, you can't get it back. We are just this paper calendar. Every day there is a page removed. And by time, it will be finished. We are just this calendar. So, we have a homework until we die. Not for next week. You don't have to send emails anymore. I would encourage you to send an email tonight saying, thank you, Sister Maryam. Because she spent nights, actually. Every day, she is just uh, taking your emails, uh, transferring them into a Google document that I see from anywhere in the world, actually, by accessing this document. You can just say, thank you, Sister Maryam, Jazakallah khairan, or something. And make dua for her. And for Brother Mahmoud, inshallah. Our homework is, every single day we have to read Quran. This is the power that we get. Don't unplug yourself by skipping one day. Every single day, around 60 minutes. If you are... Uh, busy 40 minutes with contemplation and reflection every single world word every single letter in the Quran can benefit you find the benefit Salah should be with khushu'ah Salah should be with consciousness of Allah You should always ask Allah to fix your heart Al-ilhah ala Allah Ask Allah Allah to fix your heart Make dua Allah to Allah to Give you a sound heart. And we have to do adhkar in the morning. And the adhkar of the evening. 
with contemplation and I'm sending it to you inshallah in an attachment today and don't forget to look at the creation these days there are daffodils and there are roses beautiful very beautiful flowers every flower wallah I can stand looking at it for five minutes or ten minutes remember the creation of Allah and how perfect Allah is and how perfect the creation of Allah is this way you are actually charging your heart with Iman like that we finished the first workshop the brothers told me that I should give the second workshop which is another eight weeks starting the 9th of May which is called the spiritual purification this deals with something else deals with your ego and deal with humbleness deal with sincerity this is something separate but you have to continue doing this homework forever until you die insha'Allah Jazakumullah khair